It's been a while since we've had the chance to catch up and yeah. the chance to talk, and I feel like a lot of life mm -hmm. has happened to you. And yeah. I, want, I want to get into some of those things, but first, like the song that we're playing now on K-Love, Heaven Changes Everything. Yeah. My brain goes to an obvious thought of where that song may have come from for you. Absolutely, yeah. But when it comes to that thought, what has the idea of heaven and the hope of heaven changed for you personally? It's about perspective, you know? I mean, because it's... Uh, Nothing's different about today, in, like physically, right? It hurts when you lose somebody. We go through stuff that doesn't make sense in life. It's, it's hard, yeah. you know? But the idea that this is not all that there is, this is not the end, you know? The enemy wants to sell the lie that like whatever the low part of your story is, is the end of your story, yeah. right? That's not true for us. As believers, the greatest hope that we have is always ahead of us, right? And that changes how we see stuff today. So it changes how I go through today. Now, I don't, I don't grieve like somebody who doesn't have hope, right? That's what the Bible says. And so that's, that's what heaven changes everything to me is about perspective. Yeah. yeah, and obviously going through the loss that you guys have recently walked through. Yeah, my little brother, yeah. Yeah, that has to be something that this song was almost therapeutic to write. It was, and it was so cool because the way that it happened just shows about the body of Christ too because Matthew West, man, everybody loves Matthew West. Everybody, I mean, he's... And he writes half of Christian music, I feel Feels like. like that, right? <laughs> so at, at this point of grief for me, I'm hanging out with Matthew West and Jeff Pardo. And songwriting is a great way to process stuff that you go through. These guys are just, they're amazing songwriters. But at the moment in the room, they're just like, letting me say it, you know, just letting me get it out. And I'm just sharing about the hurt. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, you know, I'm just like, I don't know how people deal with this who don't know Jesus. You know, the hope of heaven changes everything about everything. And Matthew West is just over there, like, writing down titles, dude. Yeah. They just let me talk it out, man. And, and even that, that was so cool because the greater, like, songwriting community in Nashville, man, they really showed up for me, man. Yeah. And uh, have kind of helped walk through some of this stuff. And so Matthew turns around at one point and has, like, nine song titles of things that we talked about. Yeah. And then just goes, let's, let's start here. Yeah. Heaven changes everything. When you were talking it out, mm. what were some of the things you, you, you were saying that you were feeling? And I, the reason why I ask is because we've only been playing the song for a few weeks and we're already getting stories of that. Mm. Like my mom passed away, yeah. my brother passed away, my best friend died of cancer, and they're sharing some of these feelings that they don't really have answers to. Mm. Like when you were writing the song, you were sharing some deep feelings, I'm sure, mm -hmm. of things you were thinking and feeling. What were some of those things that you were trying to express? Man, it's just the heartache. Man, Jay was my best friend, you know, mm -hmm. and partner in ministry. Kind of the hub in the middle of the wheel in Big Daddy Weave, and there's just this void there now, you know. And it's like, what do you, what do, you do with that? How do we go on in light of that, you know? Yeah. And it's like, well, what's the last thing that we heard, right? It's, it's man, this, this is our mission, to go and share hope. And we would share hope by just being real about the stuff that we go through and sharing where we find Jesus in those places. And where I find Jesus in that is looking forward. I know His presence is here to comfort me, mm -hmm. but then I also I'm looking forward to the fact that, man, when my brother stepped out of his life, he is seeing stuff I'm dreaming about, yeah. you, you know? That begins to change even the way that I feel today as I, as I think about one day when I step through, you know? Yeah, something I really believe is that Christians are either the craziest people on the planet or the strongest people on the planet. It's probably a mix of both because we don't get our strength from ourselves, we find our strength in God. And mm -hmm. when all of life can go wrong, mm -hmm. we're like, okay, I wonder what God's gonna do with this. Like we hold on to a hope that doesn't make sense to this world, which is why I think at times we're viewed as a little crazy, a little different, but to hear a song put it into perspective the way you did, mm. it kind of shows everyone this is the reason why. Mm -hmm. This mm -hmm. is the hope and the things that we're looking forward to. This is what we hang on to now. That's yeah. right. That's right. That's so cool to hear. And something we were talking a bit about, I want to flash back to when you were dating your wife. <laughs> so you told me the story about how you were going to talk to her stepmom or her mom. Yeah, that's right. About, hey, I want to marry a daughter. Yeah. What happened? Oh my gosh, man. So. Big Daddy Weave has one record out. Okay. Yeah, we come through Houston, Texas. Uh, I have this window where I get to go sit with my potential 
mother-in-law. And this is the like early days of Big Daddy the Weave. The early days we're just getting we're like, started, you know. This is baby weave. We're trying to figure I'm, out if we're even gonna be a thing. <laughs> Big baby weave, yeah. It's like <laughs> so I'm thinking in my mind, like, what am I gonna say to this woman to convince with her that it's like legit? Yeah. We're she really has a, a band that she, she has a future that my work is music, but it's like it's look things are looking up, you know, because otherwise it's a hard thing to kind of validate, you know. Right. And so we get in the car. We had out at this time a song called Audience of One. It was our second song. My mother-in-law, future mother-in-law pulls up, you know, and I go to get in. I'm so nervous, dude. I sit down in the car and I hear, boom, to my audience. Well, our song comes on the radio. You couldn't have planned that. I was like, God, listen, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Jesus, right then and there. And so, man, and sure enough, uh, she kind of already knew who I was in the Lord and really yeah. kind of put a lot of trust in, in that. And I married way out of my league, man. Yeah. God is real. People meet my wife and they go, God is real, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You're a walking dude, proof. That's your, that's your wife? You know, it's like only Jesus could do that. Right? Uh, that's, when, when you guys have been walking this journey of ministry, like how has it been to have a helpmate in her? Like how has she supported you and kind of helped you find your perspective? And oh my gosh. Your walk with God, I'm sure. I couldn't put on my shoes without her hardly, you know? Yeah. I mean, she does so much. And she's the unsung hero of our house. Yeah. Well, except for when we're there because we know and we we sing her praise. You know what I mean? We're so thankful, man. Um, she's the grace of God to me with cooler shoes on. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, Candace Weaver is, is a miracle in my life, man. She's she's literally yeah. the grace of God to me. Yeah. And then kids? How many? Three kids. Three. What's that like? What's, what, is, what is the picture of the Weaver house? Well, um, yeah. Eli, Zeke, Naomi are growing into like these adults. At first, you know, you have little kids. How old are your kids? Uh, seven and three. Okay. Seven right? and four, four, just turned four. So you're, you're coming through some of it. So seven is kind of getting up into real yeah. life a little bit. But yeah. you know, otherwise it's just like these little cartoons and stuff that you're watching and the little snacks you're providing and like messes that you're cleaning up or whatever, right? Man, my son, Eli, just turned 16. Oh. Dude, when he drove off with his siblings, the first place he drove, I love this, was to take them to church. And, and I'm just like, I don't know what to do with this information. There, there was this freedom for us because like it was maybe the beginning of the end of us having to be the taxi, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, man, we, I just sent him out into the world, you know? Yeah. What do I do with this information, you know? It was unbelievable. Though. He's an amazing young man, though. Zeke and Naomi, Zeke's our like resident com comedian in the house, you know? Uh -huh. He's hilarious, man, all the time. Naomi loves to listen to Caleb, dude. And you are actually... Naomi's favorite DJ. Oh, thank this you. Last the, this, this last year at the this this last year at the at the can, the Fan Awards, we show up and she's seeing everybody. She is wide eyed. She's loving it. She got a picture with Matthew West, man. She thought that was so cool. And then she actually got to meet you for just a second. Oh. And I said, well, which one is your favorite? She goes, well, Carlos is my favorite. And I said, well, did you get to talk to him? She goes, yeah, but, you know, she felt, like, embarrassed a little bit. But, man, she loves you, dude. She thinks you're great. Uh, that's awesome. I do remember meeting her because she said, I was like, oh, where are you from? She's like, my dad's Big Daddy Weave. I was like, okay, the whole band or which one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, Big Daddy himself. I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, she was great. And I think when you have kids, it teaches you a lot about the way God sees you. Mm -hmm. Like, for me, I, my kids are seven and three, so right now it's, it's a lot of learn, a lot of lessons about grace and forgiveness, and the things, the, the way that God loves me and how I love my kids. Mm -hmm. Is it has there been like a lesson that you know your kids have kind of shown you or taught you about how God sees you as a man? Yeah, I, I mean all the time. I remember the first one though. Um, you know when you go to have like your first child, it's like, you know, for me it was not real until like a couple weeks into the whole thing. I'm up at night because he's crying. Mm -hmm. I'm sitting in big brown chair is what I call it. Big daddy friendly chair in my house. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting there. He literally fits right here. And I'm looking at him and it just crashed on me. And I'm pretty messed up, you know? I mean, I, and I'm like, I can't imagine loving anybody any more than this. If God loves me more than this, yeah. How great is this God? Yeah. You know? How beautiful is the love of God for yeah. me? I'll never forget the first time I held my son. I'm still at the hospital. I'm in the weird, funky, not comfortable hospital chair. You're oh supposed to try to gosh, sleep in. Yeah. That thing's terrible. I'm holding my kid, trying to give my wife a few minutes of sleep, and I just start crying. Mm. And the first thing I did was call my dad. So I call my dad, and he hears my voice. He's like, what's wrong? What happened? I'm like, nothing, dad. I'm sorry. I just, uh, 
I just want you to know that I now understand how much you love me, and I'm sorry I was such an idiot. <laughs> like, I just, I came unglued because for the first time I realized how much my dad loved me and all the mm. junk I put him through, mm -hmm. and even yet how much more God loves me. That's exactly For all right. the things that he knows I did that my daddy don't even know here, right? I love, I love that too, and I love that Jesus doesn't focus on the stuff in our life that we get wrong, you know what I mean? I love that he sees through all that and he sides with the things that we, we did well. I remember I was in front of God one time really like having a rough time. You know, really just, I was confessing to him, but I was ready for like the kabong. I'm like, surely there's a moment when the grace runs out. You yeah. know what I mean? And you know what he said? He goes, dude, you didn't get it all wrong. And I was like, that's who you are? Yeah. You're the God of the universe. You're the almighty judge of all creation, you know? Yeah. And that's what he's going to say to me is he sighs with what's right. He lives to make intercession for us, you know? Mm -hmm. That's the love of God, man. The love of God is real. And that's what leads us to want to know him and be in this relationship with him. You know? Yeah. I read this quote that says, every Christian deserves death, but we receive grace instead. Come on. Wow. Like, yeah. that is what you speak of. Like that, all of the junk that we do, we don't deserve the love that we get. That's right. The cool thing is he deserved it. Mm -hmm. And so when he paid for it, he purchased us. We get what he deserves. He gives us what he deserves. Yep. That's incredible. That's the gospel, dude. That's good news. Yeah. That's awesome. A side note, uh, my wife actually went on tour with you guys. So the fact that I'm here with you right now, she's geeked out. She texts me in all caps. They are my favorite. Hey, Amber. Hey, Amber. <laughs> wherever you say that to. Hey, Amber. And yeah. you're, you're about to go out now. Mm -hmm. You're going out on this, on this big tour this fall. Who are you going out with? Man, so amazing, amazing tour. Haven't changed everything to her because you just call it what the song is that's out or whatever. Yeah. That's how you name a tour. And I mean, Tasha Layton is coming out with us, man. Amazing. We are huge fans of her. Man, also a young lady named Hannah Kerr. Yes. Who is like our sister, man. I'm telling you, we've toured for the last three seasons together. We've just seen God do the most amazing things. And so we're, we're excited to get to go out together and, and do it again. And I think one of the unique things about a Big Daddy Weave tour that I know I've experienced in the past has been these intentional moments mm. where you minister, where you mm. actually like, hey, this is a moment of songs and we're gonna have fun and we're gonna praise God, but there's moments where you guys do actual ministry live from the stage. Mm -hmm. You're praying over people. Yeah, man, like, I'm telling you. What is that like for someone okay. who's never been to a show or experienced it? To, man, you know, I, you, it means you don't have to come all yippy skippy and just ready for a show. That man, you can bring what hurts with you because, man, God is interested in getting involved, I'm yeah. telling you. If you let him in there, he can, he can change everything about the situation, you know? And, and that's, what, that's what I love is when you see somebody has gotten dragged to a show or whatever, you know, and Jesus changes their face by the end of the night, you know. Yeah. Or, or maybe they, they feel vulnerable enough to come down and let somebody pray with them, man, or getting to pray with them mm -hmm. for on our end of it, man. The Lord does so much in those times. That's the thing I'm kind of addicted to. Sometimes I feel like we're hurrying like through some of the music because I just want to see what God's going to do. You yeah. know? It's my favorite part. I was, I was talking with an artist who had gone out with you. They're, I can't think of who it was right now, but they said their favorite part of the night was when they had the chance to pray and just minister. Mm -hmm. And everything kind of slows down for a minute, and that became their, their favorite thing. And like, they're musicians. All their life they dreamed about being on stage, playing music, doing these things with songs, and that's a great part of it. Mm -hmm. But now the ministry and the heart of God has become almost more important. It, it, it really is. It and really it, is. It's a means to an end in a way. Is, yeah. is that the real heart behind what you do, that the actual ministry? Like Big Daddy Weave is just the vessel for it? It's it. I mean, it's become that. Mm -hmm. We had no idea why we we're putting together the group, right? I mean, we're in college and we're just a bunch of idiots or whatever, to, still to this day or whatever. We're men. We're still idiots. Abs we're just bigger idiots. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why <laughs> Jesus gives us above average wives, right. you know what I'm saying, to help, to help us, right? Amen. And so, but yeah, no, we had no idea that that's what this was going to be. But man, when it sort of evolved into that, man, the Lord began to just, from us hurting over things, us just being like, God, we need you. And us just being honest about it. Man, we're hurting. If you're hurting too, we'd love to stand with you in it. Yeah. And man, the Lord has just moved. And it, it, it literally just changes so much about the way that we look forward to the whole thing. You know, because you're trying to plan these musical moments or whatever. Yeah. And you're like, well, how does this lend itself? to just pointing to Jesus. Yeah. We just want to lift him up and we just want to give him the opportunity to to meet with people that he already loves so much, you know? Is that the the focus when you go into the writing room to like make a new record? Like mm -hmm. you're I know you're in the process now of recording and yeah, writing and, and yeah. making the the next Big Daddy Weave album. When you're going through that process, like is it just about finding the right 10 or 12 songs? 
or is it about saying, God, what do you have to speak in this next season? Yeah, it's it's all of that. Yeah, because you might find a song, of, you might find a great example of what he is speaking some other place. And that's great. Use that song. For us, the best song wins. But all the songs need to be about what it is that he's doing, you know. Yeah. And so I think that's the thing. And it has to resonate with us first in our own lives, in our own walk with Jesus. And then we know if it does, then it's going to resonate with other people because we're all in this together. We share that common ground in our human walk, man, you know. Has there ever been one of those songs you, you like chose to not write? You're like, I don't know, like we, we didn't, we're not going to use this one for the record. Have then did you go back mm -hmm. to it later? Do you ever still use it or is it just... You know, sometimes it'll resurface like later on or a song that somebody else, like there's been a couple times when Zach Williams called and him being like, man, I wrote this song and he's like, we've just been trying to do it. And he goes, I just don't think this is my song. And then he like the song called Alive was actually one that he gave us. And we were really? like, and it was like, it just became this staple for us, you know? And so it's cool how the whole you know, community of believers in the body of Christ works in that. And so we're, we're all one in this thing. You know? Have there been other songs that have gone out there that have actually been your songs first that you were like, no, this doesn't work for me. And then, you know, Tasha grabbed it or Toby Mac grabbed it. I don't know. Does Toby dude, Mac fit your vibe? Dude, I want that to be a prophecy. <laughs> I want that to be a prophecy over us that you're speaking. The, you we're going to we're gonna write the next Toby Mac hit Let's or go whatever. for it. Why not? Because we think Toby Mac is awesome, man. He is. How he is, is Toby Mac still so cool, man? You know... You and I have this problem. Like I think we're the same in this. We try. We kind of want to give off this cool vibe. We have an every man kind of vibe, right? Dude, I, Maybe you're cooler than me. I don't I, know. It's, it's not. Cool has never been in our repertoire. You but, know what I'm saying? Like Lori Austin, the DJ after me on K-Love, she can, she's just always cool all the time. I'm like, how do you always look cool? She's like, I don't know. I'm, like, I'm wearing my pajamas. Like, no, you're not. That's different. Toby Mac's the same way. I, at the coffee shop here, he's just in there chilling, getting his coffee. He's not wearing anything special, but he just looks cool because it's Toby. And I'm like, how do they do that? Dude, it's just, he just, he exudes cool, dude. It's Toby, a little annoying though, right? Toby Mac. It's the Mac part of Toby Mac. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's it. You had the name Big Daddy. So I feel like that should exude some level of cool. It, it, it definitely exudes something. I'll tell you that. <laughs> It's like we're just keeping it real. <laughs> it is always great chatting with you and catching up. Hey, I wish you brother. nothing but success moving forward. And the song, Heaven Changes Everything, on K-Love. Keep calling, keep requesting, and keep sharing your stories because they're awesome to hear. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me on, dude. Yeah, man.